Battle control initialized. Hello there, comrades and cannon fodder. And um, there's a 1v1 multiplayer game for you on Timmy and Matt. I'm using Russia, and my opponent's using France for this one. But this is a test of my early Second War Factory build order again. Um, so um, I'll track the build order and see how that goes and compare it to my opponent's asset value and things like that. Um, my opponent's en sending his engineer straight for the oil derrick, as I'm doing. And in a previous post um, today, one of my opponents sent a dog this way and up here looking for my engineer. And my engineer had about reached this point when the dog got there to find no one. My engineer had got about that far. So it could easily have run up behind. Yeah, he caught my rifle guard out. But he could easily have run up behind that dog and caught my engineer. These guys are waiting for my engineer to head back. They should have just stayed where they were, because there was a chance he would have headed, uh, could have head back on his own, or started to head back without rifle guards adequately escorting him at first. Could have caught him out. And we've both captured two oil derricks each. Um. Got some rifle scouts moving about. There, I've killed my uh, rifle guards, have taken care of that guy. And he's placed a rifleman here. This is to track my expansion progress, so they'll know when I reach this point. Obviously, they'll see um, ore trucks driving around, and they'll know I've expanded that far. There's some more rifles on their way out and about just uh, this one's important because it tracks whether I go early to the center or because I often go here first and that is not the best idea the best bet is to expand to this ore patch before you expand to this one in the top corner because it's like caution says in his post you can fall back to this one if you need to and if you take this one, you also take it from the enemy. You prevent the enemy using it, and you use it yourself. That's important and double of double value. So uh, that's why it's best to expand to this one first. But my opponent's got his engineer there. And look, I've got a rifle. And I've sometimes, once or twice recently, I've forgotten that. Or I haven't noticed in time, and my opponent snipe, he got his in time. But I haven't noticed that, that my rifleman is there, and that's what he's there for. And there's been a couple of times recently where I've actually, yeah, he's there, he's actually got the engineer, that I've actually forgotten that, or not noticed in time. So that's no good. I've lost my engineer, and my opponent's got two oil derricks to my one. So that's not ideal. I need to decide what to do, whether I'm going to destroy it or capture it. And let's have a look. Uh, I am building my MCV. Uh, my opponent is further up. Oh, no, I'm building my MCV, and I'm further along than my opponent. He's got to wait about 20 seconds after mine's complete. So he's slightly behind. They are slightly behind. And I'm uh, checking out this area. He's got a rifle guard there. Look, he's tracking my expansion. You know, they are. And my MCV is arriving at my first expansion. My opponent's just got theirs. Their MCV's rolled out, so they should. They've got 17 seconds to make it to the expansion before they're wasting time. I'm still building barracks at this point because of my build, but I've still got ore here at the starting base because of the timing. That's why there are specific, it works for specific maps, this build, where you have a decent amount of starting ore. And I could move this home base MCV out to here and use these barracks that I'm building now to secure this area. Look, you see, I'm building barracks there to defend my MCV, my construction yard. Well, these barracks that I'm building at the moment, now I'm building refinery to place at my expansion but you can move out your one mcv and then the other and place you a few barracks at this point 
to um, actually secure all patches, but here my units are in front of this oil derrick because I want to capture it rather than let it go to the enemy or destroy it, and he's caught me out of position. My tanks are not up front. Now they are. Good. That was lucky. But let's check army values before hostilities begin properly. Uh, we're at 15 each, exactly. So my build order does does work. It's okay. It keeps up with a decent quality build order, and my opponent now knows that my ore truck has expanded here because it is, is harvesting here, you can see it. So I've sent a few units to deal with him. Just uh, destroy them straight away. The enemy might not notice immediately, or if they'd hear it, they may not know where the shooting's coming from. If you kill that rifle guard, they might not know. But here we are, he's caught me, and I am out of position. I should be behind this oil derrick at least, and I'm losing units as I'm retreating. Look, but this tank, luckily, is going to save some, some more infantry. Now I can use the view range of the oil derrick, but it died straight away. So now these guys are in a bad position again. Far from ideal, although they did buy me time. It's a destroyed army, that is. I'm at 12 just, he's at 14, my opponent. They are at 14, and I'm bringing tanks up. And my home base is extremely vulnerable. But this is too important, this ore patch, to let the enemy destroy it. Yep, yeah, now I'm investigating um, this ore patch because I need to get um, my expansions rolling. And it doesn't look like I've actually noticed um, where exactly the enemy's expanded to, but I may have seen an ore truck or something because I wouldn't have fallen back for nothing. And I, w I would hope that I haven't, I wouldn't leave this for no reason, but I've gone for the easy option. But he knows I've expanded there. This um, APC hasn't killed the rifle guard. But my opponent's at 17,000. I'm at 18, so this build order is proven. Even after how badly I've been hit, the build order works. The build order is sound. It works. And look, I've made this def a solid defended, uh, solidly defended area now quite quickly. And even if the enemy does block your war factory's production, it'll only, your production will go to the other war factory. It's no big deal. They can't block you with that tactic because they'll have to use two vehicles and block them both. And good luck doing that. Um, but yeah, I've got my um, assets adequately defended, but he's moved immediately up this way, my opponent. They've gone straight for this, because that little rifle guard has told him that I'm here, so it's ideal. He's done his job, and now I'm escaping with my MCV, and he's caught this force off. <coughs> he caught me off guard, out of position again, and my tanks are behind my men and stuck. But at least my MCV is escaping. He could have sent these medium tanks to pursue this. Even two would have done the job. But he's completely overrun me, Lock. Punched through my defences. My primary expansion is gone. And now I'm having to respond. Uh, 18,000 each. So we're still... The build order is keeping my army value up. I'm at 17 just. And my opponent's at 18. So the build order is proven. And look here. Even after how badly I was overrun, I've got a good position because he's got to move through my buildings. Now I've got the advantage in tanks and he's got medium tanks, which are puny compared to heavies. And I've suddenly turned that engagement. Now my opponent's got 9,000 and I've got 11. He's at 7 and I'm at 10. 11. So the build order is proven, even after how badly I've been doing and the mistakes I've made, this build order has kept me in it, just solely by giving me enough tanks and look, my opponent, is move they're moving straight round here and they know what they're doing, it's an excellent set of manoeuvring and an example of how to manoeuvre an attack, they've gone from attacking here to attacking right at the other side. And I'm now uh, sending units forward after my winning that engagement to try and turn the battle in my favour. But, look what happens, I'm bringing an MCV forward and my infantry are too spread out too much. And my tanks haven't got it, they can't, there's not enough infantry for my tanks to screen. And now my advantage in tanks is wasted because they're just engaging infantry they can't do anything against. So I've not even got them screening base defences, I've really let that go and wasted the advantage I gained from winning this defensive battle here. That's a big mistake, but the build order's not to blame, it's the person controlling it. I've really messed that up. So now my MCV is running again, and thankfully I've got this. 
uh, supply of uh, ore, plus some is regrowing at my base, but I'm imagining my credit situation is now a problem, which it is, look, I'm uh, struggling. I've got one ore truck at my home base, so I may have to bring a couple back soon, but I'm trying to move forward and using these infantry, this barracks, but you see how weakly uh, defended this construction yard is, and look, he's going for an attack, he's got the superior sized force, Nice bit of flamethrower work, but I'm pursuing them because if he moves forward he'll have to move into the view range of my structures. So I thought I can position my units here and uh, do some damage. And he was right to back away from that because it would have been a, a bad situation. And now he's bringing in tech. That's bad. Now I'm at 5,000, he's at 12,000 army value, I'm at 5,000. So that these artillery pieces, that's that's bad. Seeing that, I did, I was just managing to hold him off after a couple of serious mistakes. But the artillery, that, that's not good. That's no-no. And now we've got a helicopter look. And he's secured the map. Now, I could have moved around here. But, you know, he's going to have control. He's got the map control. I'm backed into the corners. And there's this here. Yeah, I'm mining a bit at the front. So... It's okay, but he's picking off rocket troops with that helicopter. He's got the tech. He, um, you know, I can't compete under these conditions now because he can stand off even though he's got a superior force of standard units, tanks, infantry, etc. I'm trying to get away. I have no chance. But even though he's got the superior force of tanks, infantry, etc., he can use them to screen his artillery and just stand off and bombard my troops, look, from a distance because I can't see where these shots are coming from, look. And if I try and push and attack against him, he's got a superior force, and then I won't have the defender's advantage anymore, so I'm in a bad situation. I was trying to use my ore trucks to do a bit of screening, but it didn't work. I haven't got the infantry mass to turn the battle in my favour again. I'm at 5,000, he's at 22 now, and having the tech assets just meant he can fight more they can fight more effectively and that they, uh, they've got me beaten. But this game did prove that the build order was sound because I made one mistake after another after another and the build order kept me in it and I had a chance to kill Tanya here look I shot a helicopter down that was nice but Tanya's there and I, I was like sending this flat truck on a, a, a mission around the edges trying to avoid units but it wouldn't target her at this point and now it's too close to the tanks but it was already shooting at something else by the time it got within range of her, sadly. But I'm trying to sell structures to target her, but I can't pick her out among all this luck. That's all I'm trying to play for at this point, is to kill Tanya. Trying to sell structures and pick her off. Um, but it, it just wasn't working. There you go, look. And she's still alive, look. Can't pick her out as a target. Nothing I could do. So uh, there you go, I've still got some expansions and I could have maybe gone for this but yeah I was on the back foot too much, it was uh, too, um, one too many uh, mistakes, just uh, ruined it, ruined my chances, the chances that I managed to earn through defensive combat and with the build order helping, you know, I, I didn't take, I couldn't turn them into, you know, um, good results, I couldn't... Um, you know, take uh, take advantage of the advantages I'd earned through that defensive fighting, and because the build order was so effective in this situation, I couldn't I couldn't take advantage of it. Though sadly, my opponent had me locked down, and as soon as I got the the tech working against me, that was the end of that. But like I say, it was proven that that build order works. It's a quality quality build order, I think, because that was d demonstrated under pressure. And um, any uh, any player on form, and this was a while back, so I was well out of practice when I made this video. Uh, when I played this game, sorry, not when I made this video. I, when I played this game, I was out of practice. So normally there would have been a lot more attacks and flank attacks and things like that. A lot more, there should be a lot more skill going to this. But it still was a good test of the build order with some solid defensive effort. So there's the army graph look. It matched my opponent, even though with how terrible I was doing, it did up until the uh, worst engagement that I lost. Where, <clears throat> but my opponent did lose at that point. Look, that was the engagement here where I managed to f stop the horde from uh, advancing. 
Uh, but here's the earnings graph. I had a nice earnings spike at one point and then a drop and then a big drop at the end because um, I wasn't expanding properly as my opponent's finishing army. He's got Tanya, plenty of tanks. I think there's 10 there. Here's a combat chart. My opponent's got 323 kills and I've got 218 kills. They've got a 29,000 army value, so it was a solid defeat against me. And I, I'm, my opponent destroyed 89,000 in army value and assets, and I destroyed 50,000 in assets, so it was a decisive defeat. Uh, support powers are in effect. They've got a GPS satellite ticking down, and when that's ready to, when you build a tech center here, an allied tech center, you see the purple bar fills up, and that's the timer on the GPS satellite. And when the timer ticks down, you can select the ability, and it will launch the GPS satellite. And through the shroud, you can see enemy units and structures marked out with symbols. So it enables you with a satellite to see the enemy's. Uh, disposition and the uh, locations of enemy bases and any assets and you can even see their units represented by dots for infantry and vehicle symbols for the vehicles and ore trucks and stuff and the buildings have their own symbols so when you launch that satellite it gives you a it shows you the enemy's positions for a set amount of time you know a few minutes or something and then it resets again it's an eight minute timer and then you can do it, use it again whenever you want, launch it again after the eight minutes, and it shows you the enemy positions for a few minutes. So it's a very effective, very useful ability. Now, the GPS satellite in the original Red Alert showed you when it launched, it revealed everything. But with this, there's a shroud, so it wouldn't matter if it revealed everything, because the shroud would still be over it. So the to make the ability effective, you can you see through the shroud or the... Um, the the you know the um shroud and then there's the fog the shroud isn't on this this is the fog of war i should say so uh this fog of war you can see the symbols through it and in the old original red alert when you launch your satellite it would reveal the entire shroud if you haven't revealed the map because you'd have to move your units around to reveal it to to uncover the map and reveal push the black back the black shroud but as you do that it doesn't creep back in the original the shroud is uncovered when it's uncovered and you send your units everywhere to reveal all of the map but um now that that's changed and there is no shroud this fog of war is what's affected by the satellite you know because if it revealed the shroud it would be useless for this because the fog of war would just cover up what the shroud revealed and you don't use a shroud in open ra it's not it's not used so like i say this gps ability has been altered by the good people at open ra to make it effective in under these conditions so you can see through the fog of war but that's uh, one of the best support powers i think that's what makes the allies the best is that you can see where the enemy is and when you launch that gps satellite you can uh, see where the enemy's going to attack and head them off and be there waiting for them or attack where the enemy is and it just it's a very it's a godlike power godlike you know the iron curtain's good effective and simple but the uh, gps satellite when in the you know i counted that as what made the allies the best faction in the original because you can see everything but in this the way they've uh, got the gps satellite changed it's still extremely effective and it does justice to the original ability while still maintaining while making it effective in a modern uh, strategy environment strategy game environments which is excellent of them to do that i wasn't sure about this ability at first this gps satellite but when you think about it it has to be changed and it has to be changed you know um in it can't just uh, show everything permanently that's it it's it's different now but there's the production tab and here's the economy my opponent's got the eight ore trucks left i've got a bit of cash to finish with but my opponent earned 111,000. i earned 96 so it wasn't bad considering i was trapped on this part of the map and one ore truck here for a little bit not too bad at all but i was at 29 actions per minute my opponent nah my opponent was at 29 actions per minute i was at 32,000. so uh yeah they earn 111,000. i earn 96. not bad not bad really but um i'm going to add a second game to this one because uh that was fairly brief <coughs> but the uh second game 
is uh, is another one v one. So I'll just add that for you. And it was my last game that I played. So this is a 1v1 on a map that a player who makes maps, J Megatank, I think he's called, and anyone who plays Red Alert maps will know, will probably recognise the name. Now, this is a 1v1 on Eternal Warriors, um, but it's not the... I've got the latest balance iteration of this map, actually. This is 3.2, but I've actually got 3.4. So, but this is the map. And because um, it was recommended as, um, you know, uh, a decent map and I knew it, I've played on it before, but um, I thought, oh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll give that a go now, actually. I haven't played on this map for a while, so I'll give it a go under the, you know, uh, a newer version of it. So, um, you know, I took up the advice of the map maker. Because they made um, that particular map maker made Scorched Earth and stuff like that. They made some brilliant maps. They're one of the two, two, one of the my two favourite map makers. The other, uh, the you know whoever made Kosovo and Timmy and, and Eden Lake and all those maps. You know they're they're some of the classics that I really like. But this guy does make some lovely maps that re I really like. Like that scorched earth is was it, these some of these maps that he makes are instant classics. That's just one way I describe them. They're instant classics. Very good maps, and you know they're effective, and they're going to be part of this regular circuit immediately. But he's picked off a rifle guard and then picked off a second one. I sent them to hunt for engineers, so the first one maybe should have gone here. But my engineer has reached this point, so that's why I sent them to arrive roughly then to arrive at the same time my engineer does and hopefully catch him at the back from the back you know but my opponent's engineer is no way near there yet and i could have caught him out if i'd gone for this oil derrick i'll remember that in future maybe send a rifleman straight down and this way so he can look for an engineer here but it's a good idea to keep an eye on what your engineer is doing to know what the enemy's engineer roughly what point he can be at but in this case it, it was no use Um, but I've captured two oiled Eric's. My opponent's in the process of capturing his second. But when I, um, I've taken this oil Eric, I actually went, I saw the hospital and thought, right, I'm going back for the, uh, to get the hospital with my engineer. Rather than moving forward, uh, because I haven't got my scout vehicle just yet. But rather than moving forward and risking units, I thought, well, I'll get my scout vehicle, get this captured and then move forward with a more complete force. But my opponent's moving out, he's sending rifle scouts uh, out about the map as I am, look, just to go and guard areas and investigate, do a bit of scouting. But I've placed rifles at my ore patches, look, here and here, just for, to avoid rocket drops doing big damage. I place at least a few rifles at my ore patches now. You know, just for when en if en the enemy drops off an APC with five rocket launch troops in it, I don't want that. So I'm just placing r a few um, riflemen nowadays. Just scatter them at my ore fields, just to guard them. And I've got my engineer in that APC, which is, you know, I've got to be careful with it. I've only got two rockets left in that group as well. The third one's here, now a fourth one. I should move them up with this group. But it looks like I was trying it because I've won an engagement there. I thought, right, that's it. I'm going to try and capitalise on that and to capture this. And then I've got a forward point with a view range advantage I can use to as a forward strong point. But I didn't know the enemy had set up uh, an expansion there. I didn't. I haven't. I can't see these structures. I was expecting units there, perhaps, but I didn't know he'd set up this. Um, I'm just arriving, so that I should have known. If I'm arriving there, there's no reason why he wouldn't be. You know, he's got the capability to do so, at least, because I have. You know, that's one good way to help judge what your opponent might be doing. Is um, to look at the timings and what you're doing. That's why it's effective to try and change the usual tactic and go against what people expect. You know, if you're using these established, well-known tactics that are solid and they're excellent and they work, but you have to do them well, because if your opponent's doing the same thing, the first one to drop the ball is going to lose, you know, or overcommit. That's a common cause of uh, loss of uh, 
um, a game is by over committing in an attack when you previously had the advantage. But I can see these units here. He's got a couple of rocket troops with them, but look, I need to defend these ore fields because I know that they send units to uh, a lot. Of, it's quite uh, popular nowadays for players to send attack forces and small groups of rocket launcher troops to destroy ore trucks in ore fields, go on eco raids with rocket drops. And I've caught this force out. I'm moving my APC away. He's still got my engineer inside, but I've got a tank leading the way at the moment. And I know I can push this force back. He's got two tanks. And look, he's under heavy fire, the APC. I've seen that and like, right, getting out of here. Don't want to lose the APC or the engineer. So he's on his way back to the repair depot, service depot. And now I'm here checking out what the... I'm expecting to overrun an expansion here, but my opponent has actually arranged an effective defence. He's got base defences, units, he needs to press stop. Because he's got less, and an attack move won't help. It won't serve you, because he's the defender anyway. I've pressed stop when I'm in, when I'm in an engagement. Now I've overwhelmed him, I can attack move through, but I probably, you know, was uh, had more units stood still, and he attacked move into me, there's no need. Use the defender's advantage, place his units here in between all his buildings, but he did place them well anyway. But yeah, I'm still expanding, and I'm expanding towards his base. Look, this way, you see I'm still placing barracks quickly. This is uh, going to turn into a base push quickly. If the enemy fights me off, I could quickly fall back to here and keep him uh, blockaded with a base push. There you go. So I thought I'd tack that onto my previous game, and the first one was to show uh, the second early War Factory build under pressure, and how uh, the build order works. And this one was just to uh, add on and for a little bit of extra entertainment for my from our viewers. And this tank was on his way back for repairs. Always try and get used to doing that. But yeah, I'd overrun the enemy, and he did make a decent stand here. It's just that attack move didn't help and I think he could have held me off better uh, more effectively if he'd have stayed back and he did have a decent position it's just he attack moved into my forces I think that kind of worked against him anyway but I could fall back to this you know if I wanted to I expanded straight towards him but the enemy could also have moved this way and this way but this is usually the first expansion uh, it's the first one I go for, and it is. it was my opponent's as well. It's usually that one. If um, the enemy takes that away from you, you're in trouble, because you've got to go a fair distance to get an equal a patch of equal size, and your opponent is going to probably reach it as easily as you can. So uh, I'll go through the graphs and charts anyway, but there's the army graph. Not a lot to see, because it was a brief game. Um, earnings graph and when you lose an early engagement like that and then it just turns against you and carries on turning against you that can happen to any player these quick games that are over in eight minutes not even eight minutes it can happen to any player doesn't matter how good you are it can it can easily happen where you just get caught out because I won that small early engagement and then I caught his force out here moving and it was along here stretched out when I engaged him so you know it can happen to anyone early in the game and it doesn't necessarily mean you've lost the game but this this down here does really but here's the combat chart I've just gone through the earnings graph there you go is uh, not a lot to see but the finishing army I think is that what's that about five tanks yeah there's five heavy tanks there and, and a reasonably decent group of infantry, actually. But here's the combat chart. I killed 89 units. My opponent killed 36. So, uh, and I didn't lose any structures. My opponent lost five. But there were five crucial structures. One, one, of, one of them was the construction yard and a refinery, obviously. Um, but there are no support powers in effect. Not by not within seven and uh, three quarters of a minute. Seven minutes, three quarters. No way. Not for no. I don't get tech that early usually. But plenty of players do though. But there's the production tab still building, and here's the economy. I earned fifty thousand. My opponent earned thirty-five. I've got seven ore trucks. 
Uh, and here's the basic tab. I'm at 29 actions per minute. My opponent was at a nice relaxed 21. Oh, there's the uh, stats and graphs. There's not a lot to see. Like I say, these quick, brief games, they can go turn against you and go that way. And it can happen to, it can happen to any player. It's just how it is. But I thought this is my most recent game. I'd add it to that last uh, game that I posted about the second early War Factory build. And that was fought a little while ago. So I thought I'd put these two together. And um, I hope you enjoyed the video, viewers. And if you like what you saw, give us a sub and a like. And take good care of yourselves. And until next time, goodbye. Battle control terminated.